Survivors are here this week to continue the process of educating lawmakers about just how badly children in the troubled teen industry are treated. I'm so grateful that you're all here and I promise you I'm gonna keep fighting. There will be the solitary confinement booth plus a survivor activation. So at the survivor gathering the night before, we'll prep posters similar to what you did. Most of it is just cutie guy. Like meetings, like we did last time, like there's no difference. Okay, so should I just read it out loud? Yeah. I also want to thank the survivors and family members who are here today, Caroline and Jade, for bravely sharing their experiences with institutional abuse in the hope of making a difference. This is so great because it shows an, another side of Paris. Exactly. Try that. Yeah, let's try yes. these blazers and then we'll try this pant yeah. and then I'll look for a top. Yeah, it's, it's already like fits you really well. Yeah, very professional. Like a sailor. Yeah, it's definitely a sailor <laughs> moment. Yeah, I don't know if that's the right. That's, that's like if right you're going to like a marine point. moment. Yeah. yeah. On the yacht. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, no. I'm so proud to be going back to Washington, D.C. This is such an important moment for us all. I'm really excited for this trip, but I also always get nervous. Anytime I'm doing interviews where it's something that's difficult to talk about and really serious subjects. Off to the White House. And what time does this go till? This goes until 11, so we'll be there 9.30 to 11. And then we have our next meeting at 12 at the Capitol. So I'm about to go into the White House. I have a meeting. I'm going to tell my story. So wish me luck. But Hilton is pushing for a federal law to change all of this in the form of a proposed uh, accountability for Congregate Care Act because she says that this patchwork of legislation state by state is just not doing enough. We just arrived at the Capitol. Time for some meetings with senators. Just had another very productive meeting. Today is going amazing raising so much awareness of the situation. A lot of people are not even aware of everything that's happening. So I'm just so grateful to be here and to tell everyone our story. Oh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Every day it was torture, just being screamed at, hit. Kids were being sexually abused at night. Um, there was no education and I was terrified for my life. When I found out that this was still happening and even on a bigger level because now there's thousands of these schools with 120,000 children a year going to these places. I knew that I needed to stand up and use my voice and help put a stop to it. Thank you. It's my vibe, my jam. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Just finished the last meeting of the day. I'm now headed back to the hotel. We'll be doing an op-ed interview, and then we're going to be meeting with the survivors. So, it's been a long day, the day's not over, but we are going to keep fighting this fight. Back at the Conrad, about to go downstairs to go meet with the survivors. I just want to say thank you all so much for coming here to DC for this. This is, I'm in tears, I'm very emotional just seeing everyone in the room, and it means so much to me, to other people who are trapped in these places right now, and I'm just so proud of all of us. I went to five facilities over three years and didn't talk about it for a decade. And then right when your documentary came out, someone interviewed me and my friend about our program and we got it closed down. It took me, what, 10 years to find you? <laughs> it took yeah. me 20 years to find this. I mean, it really was all because of you. You really ripped the Band-Aid off. None of us deserved what we were put through. We're not the ones who should be ashamed. It's the people who work at and run these places. Yeah. I just, I love you all, and I'm so grateful that you're all here, and I promise you I'm gonna keep fighting. Tomorrow's gonna be a very busy day, so I'll try to get some rest. I have to wake up in a couple hours. I'm gonna do this. Hey guys, we are here in front of the Capitol. We have made an installation of a solitary confinement booth. Wanted people to come and experience and see how it feels to be in one of these. Children are locked in these every single day. We'll be here from 10 to 11 a.m. 
that felt so weird. Like when he closed and locked the door, I, I literally know, started I was, crying. I was worried for you. I literally had like a flashback. <laughs> Trying to hold back the tears because this is a really important day and directly after this we have a press conference so I am trying to be as strong and brave as possible. I know that many of the people who are here right now have spent days if not weeks locked in a room like that so these type of, of memories and experiences will stay with you forever. You're so beautiful and inside and out. I love you. I love you. Thank you. So I'm so sorry. You made this happen. Time. You made this. I've waited nine years. Long years. And I tried to advocate by myself. I got nowhere until the group. Alyssa brought me to the group. I'm so happy you're here. And I wish that he could be here with us today. But I know that he's looking down and knowing we're thinking of him. He is. It makes me mad that I didn't scream louder because I can't believe all these people are still going through it 40 years later. It is 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why didn't I speak up? And I'm scared. I thought they'd come back and get me again. I know. I have nightmares every night. Me too. <laughs> I, I, I understand you. I am. Bless you. Survivors are here this week to continue the process of educating lawmakers about just how badly children in the troubled teen industry are treated. Our job is to raise awareness by sharing our experiences with abuse, neglect, and even death of a loved one. Our legislator's job is to enact policy that addresses the solution. I don't believe there is such a thing as inaction. We will work for broad bipartisan support of the Stop Institutional Child Abuse Act to make sure it passes and becomes law. We are not playing politics with children's lives. I'm hopeful once you hear these stories that you cannot unhear them. We will not give up. There needs to be greater protections for our children in institutional care settings. Our children deserve it. Brandon deserves it. And our voices will never be silenced. People need to know this is happening now. Yeah. It's not what, just like back when I was a teenager, this is now. I'm so glad we're doing this in front of Congress as well, too, mm -hmm. so they could like so they know we're serious. Whenever I was in there, whenever we talk, I, oh my gosh, I'd be like, oh, Paris, that's our PCS queen. Like, we love her. <laughs> and when you, when you did the, um, the, when you came to the protest yes, and stuff, I wasn't there, but I was told what happened. The kids heard you. They, they saw, saw us? Yeah, they saw oh, you. God. That's why they put uh, the, pex, the plexi stuff on the glass, so yeah. we can't see out. Yeah, we weren't allowed to look out the window, so I was like, I hope they can see that we're out yeah, here fighting for them. The way they treat people with depression or autism like me, and you know, the restraints, like, I was underweight. It did not take, like, four guys t to tackle me and slam my head into the ground. Thank you for coming and being strong. Thank you so Thank much, Miss Paris. I'm from Bethesda in the 80s, and nobody listened to me until you came around. Thank you, ma'am. My pleasure. When I was 16 years old, I was taken in the middle of the night by two large men. I had no idea who they were. I thought I was being kidnapped, and they held up handcuffs and said, do you want to go the easy way or the hard way? And I found out later that's what they call the transport system, and it's one of the ways so that the parents don't see the facilities where they're dropping off their children. It was like a living nightmare just every day being screamed at, yelled at, silenced, not allowed to speak, literally putting us on chairs, staring against a wall, and if you even got tired or just slumped your shoulders down for one minute, they would immediately come and hit you in the back of the head and start your time all over again. And I probably spent six months staring at a wall. I had no education. These are basic human rights, the right to not be abused, the right to be able to speak to your family, the right to be able to not be sedated and restrained. We just finished our last meeting at the Capitol. Today was such an impactful day. I'm so proud and so excited. I feel like we're really gonna make some huge changes. So now we're on our way to the White House. We're gonna be doing a candlelight vigil outside. We're gathered here in front of the White House tonight to remember those who've been lost to this industry that has harmed so many families. It was hard for me to believe that a 14-year-old teenage girl that needed help would die in the hands of somebody else that you think 
that when you place your child, when you need help and you need services for them, that they would help. The last thing he said to me, the last time I saw him, he tried to speak and he said, I want, I want, and then finally it came out, love. You know, Justice for Naomi, I saw her at McDonald's. I said goodbye. The next time I saw her, she was at a funeral home, um, dead. We brought her home in a backpack, cremated. And that's how we brought her home from that facility. Since then, we found out lots of information that is just absolutely wrong. And this bill that we're all here to support, changes that need to be made, need to happen so that we can have a safer, place for kids to go. I can't imagine Naomi being at that place for only a few weeks and this happening. It's just... Day three of DC. Another day, another slay. How are things going? Things are going amazing. I feel that people are really understanding just how serious of an issue this is. Hello. Nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you again. Pleasure. Thanks for being here. Yes. And I hear you may have a bipartisan bill now, right? Yes. That's good. Okay. We'll try to help you in any way we can. I'm all for the proposal. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, that would mean the world it. to me. It's a good bill. It's Thank good you. Bill. Thank you so much. And you much. were subject to this abuse yourself. Two years of my life lost. The majority leader just committed to helping us pass this through Senate. I am so thrilled. Dancing all these tears away. Dancing all these tears away. Dancing all these tears away. Without no. your leadership, people like me wouldn't know. No, no one would know. How you could know? you think that this is happening? It's exactly. definitely very personal to me, and I feel that turning pain into purpose is the most powerful thing that I can do. It was, it was just a lot of torture tactics. There was no education whatsoever. Thank you for caring and having a big heart. Oh, absolutely. That's why we're here. Thank you. How? Look, he's swimming. Yes. <laughs> In the legislation you got, that's hot. Anyway. <laughs> I've been an advocate all day, and now I am putting on one of my other hats, which is DJing. So I'm going to be performing tonight for the survivors for a lot of the staff members from Congress and senators. And uh, this is a very early DJ set at eight o'clock at night. I'm used to playing later at night, but definitely a lot more chill than it would be in Ibiza or Las Vegas at one of my normal sets. But let's do it, DC. Hi, guys. See you in a minute. I'm gonna go check and make sure the sound check is working. Everyone looks amazing. I love the kitty ears. Yes, Queen. day on Capitol Hill. It's been a long week. I think you moved the needle this oh, week. Oh yeah, it's been a yeah. really, really amazing week. Well, for me, I'm really just turning my pain into a purpose and I believe maybe God maybe go through this and gave me this gift and this platform so one day I could be the hero that I always needed. I just feel that these places need to be held accountable. They need to know they're being watched. If I can make a change with this, it will make it all worth it. Thank you for giving voice to this. There's a lot of kids who, who need you. They really do, and thank you for fighting for the same cause. So we just finished our last meeting of the day at the Capitol. It's been an incredible four days, so impactful. I feel that everyone is really understanding the seriousness of this 
and I am just thrilled with how every meeting went. As I said, I will not stop fighting until change is made, and I will be back. <laughs>